good morning good afternoon and good evening to all the trainees who have joined us in this youtube channel this channel is dedicated for urology exam preparation we are doing episode 52 this will be a mock exam episode 6 we are doing plenty of mock exams in the month of april because of the uk based frcs exams in may we have three trainee volunteers and we have a co-examiner joining us. Thank you, Vinod. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Anand. Uh, so we'll start with the first case. Uh, um, are you ready? Yes, I am. Good, good. So the time starts now. Uh, so a 65-year-old gentleman uh, comes to your clinic with right-sided hydrocel. He has some minimal non-bothersome LUTs. He mentions that one of his friends had a recent PSA test. So what would be your recommendation for uh, PSA screening and is there any evidence behind that? Right, so um, this um, gentleman in my clinic um, who uh, is interested in PSA test uh, is got minimal loss. So my recommendation as per NICE guideline because of the lower urinary tract symptoms will be um, for him to have um, a PSA test. However, I will give him um, information about the pros and cons of having a PSA test. The pros uh, is the fact that um, it's, it's a screening tool for detecting prostate cancer, and um, it does. Um, uh, it, it, um, there's, there is evidence from European randomized um, study uh, of screening for prostate cancer that um, it's improved. I mean, it can help to prevent cancer death. Uh, the only challenge is that uh, the number in there to screen is about 570C and uh, the number in there to diagnose is about 18. Uh, the, the, the odd drawback about this test is the fact that it is not disease specific. Um, it may be elevated in other cases, even when it is normal, it has not completely ruled out prostate cancer. And the uh, investigation for prostate cancer like biopsy has got its drawbacks. So I would um, give um, as I'll give this information to this patient, give him time to reflect on it, and then to decide if he would want a, bio, uh, a prostate a PSA check. Okay, that's really good. Uh, so uh, he has some bothersome LUTs. Uh, uh, so he had his PSA done. It was 5.5. Uh, How would you assess this patient? So um, I would uh, want to confirm the um, uh, the, the low urinary tract symptoms uh, when it started the progression. I want to um, um, check uh, about um, other red flag symptoms like hematuria, superpubic pain, or long line pain. I want to um, ask this patient if there are any neurological uh, is issues, and then um, check the comorbidities of this patient. Uh, and a uh, drug um, including anticoagulant to uh, have an idea of the general performance status of this patient. And then I will examine this patient um, in the presence of a chaperone after taking a verbal consent. So I'll do a general examination uh, and then focus on the examination to take any palpable uh, kidney, palpable bladder. Uh, I will examine the external genitalia and they uh, do a character examination to, ass to uh, assess the prostate, the, si the size, the consistency, and presence of any nodule in the prostate. And then I'll do a focused neurological examination, uh, which is to check uh, anary um, sensation, perianal sensation, and then um, bobocavanosa reflex. I would also, uh, because of the loot, I would um, uh, check the urine dip of this patient, uh, flow rate and postural residue, and uh, I may send urine for culture and sensitivity if there's any evidence of suggestive of infection. Okay, perfect. So he is quite fit and well for his age. He has uh, only uh, uh, diet controlled diabetes mellitus. Uh, he has no family history of prostate cancer, and his DRE uh, is uh, benign. You cannot feel any nodules. It's all smooth and normal. So what do you think about the PSA level? Uh, do you think uh, it is within the normal levels or? Well, uh, PSA uh, of 5.5, um, taking it on the face value, uh, is above the three uh, nanogram per meter recommended for um, referral on NHS. Uh, however, uh, in my practice, we do age, um, age um, specific PSA. So for this um, 65 year old man, the 
I would expect his PSA to be uh, about 4.5. So he's still a bit elevated for his age. And then I'll give him information about um, having further um, uh, tests. Uh, I also, in my practice, would use um, um, some um, a, a tool, e uh, RSPC2, to assess the, um, the risk of this patient having uh, significant prostate cancer. Okay, so where does this number three come from? You said PSA abnormal at three. Do you know yeah, where so, uh, it's taken from? Uh, it, um, I can't um, remember on the top of my head, but it's um, from a, a, a study. That's fine. That's fine. Not to worry at all. Uh, so, yeah, here you are excluded UTI and you repeated its PSA again because since it was borderline, repeat PSA is about 5.7 now. So, what are you going to do now? So, I would um, r recommend um, for this patient to have a multiparametric MRI scan after having discussion with him. Um, I, uh, the reason for that is to uh, see if there are any suspicious area in the prostate. Uh, evidence from promise study has shown that um, multiparametric MRI um, has a, a, a um, negative predictive, a high negative predictive value, in which case, if there is no um, any suspicious area, um, it is not likely the patient has got a significant prostate cancer. And then okay. I will tell the patient if there are suspicious area, he may require a prostate biopsy. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, I'm just opening the screen for you. Can you see uh, see my screen? Uh, not yet. Oh, yes, I can see it now. Yeah. But there's a dialog box covering it. Yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> this is... Um, Put on this a, image, please. Yeah, this is an HCS, um slice of a T2-weighted um, multi, uh, M magnetic resonance kind of the pelvis. It is, oh, it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. So it's showing an area of um, low signal intensity on the left peripheral zone with um, a, a breach of um, the capsule. I would want to discuss, I want to see other images and then discuss with the radiologist to um, know um, what exactly is going on, and that will help me in making appropriate recommendation. Okay, that's fine. So uh, so what is a multiparametric MRI? So what are the uh, various sequences you get in that, you do in that? Multiparametric MRI traditional sequences include uh, a T2 uh, uh, weighted imaging, which uh, gives an atomic um, 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 assessment, and then um, dynamic contrast enhancement, uh, the efficient weighted imaging, which are in the um, in, in the physiologic um, assessment or functional assessment, um, then traditionally they we uh, used to have a magnetic uh, spectro uh, spectrometry, which is no longer required. Okay, so how is MRI reported? Is there any specified standardized way of reporting it? Yes, um, it is um, reported uh, using. Uh, IRAT score, which is a prostate imaging uh, reporting and data system. And then the PIRA score um, is um, um, uh, uh, one to five. One is uh, for uh, uh, evidence of, I mean, pictures that is highly unlikely to be clinically significant for prostate cancer, Y five is pictures that is highly likely to be okay. uh, That's fine. clinically significant. Uh, there is another score called Likert. So what is the Likert. difference between PIRAT and Likert? So um, Likert scores um, also, uh, apart from the imaging um, features, it also uh, includes um, patient um, parameters, which I cannot remember on the top of my head. Okay, that's absolutely fine. So you discussed with your radiologist. So he says that it's a Likert uh, uh, 2 lesion in the right peripheral zone. Uh, so what is the sensitivity and specificity of this MRI in detecting prostate cancer? And uh, if you can, you uh, just omit uh, doing a biopsy based on a negative MRI. Well, for uh, Likert one and two, according to NICE guidelines, um, the patient do not re require a biopsy, but um, they they can have biopsy only if there are risk factors. Um, so um, I, the sensitivity is about four to sixty percent. Uh, um, why the specificity 
is um, about 90, 90, 90. Uh, well, it depends on the, for this patient with benign prostate, no family history, um, PSA 5.7, uh, like that too, I would have a discussion with him. And, um, and yeah, he, he's that's fine. So you spoke to him, he's extremely nervous about this. Uh, so he wanted to go ahead with a biopsy. So how would you counsel him for a prostate biopsy? So I would um, explain the indications and ensure, uh, explain to him the, um, if, um, uh, to, if there are any contraindications like infection and um, um, uh, bleeding disorder, we might have to correct that. And then I would explain the risk of the biopsy, which is bleeding, infection, pain, um, uh, hematuria, uh, rectal bleeding, and then um, the Okay, guys, of, uh, we need to stop there. Yeah. Okay, well done, Murli. You can give the yeah, feedback. Good. That's good. That's really good, Yanka. Uh, so mm -hmm. your presentation, uh, the speed was okay. It was quite clear. Uh, so, and uh, good points were like uh, you went through proper history. The only point you left was family history. You didn't mention about the family history and the ethnicity, uh, which are the two uh, important risk factors for prostate cancer in terms of history. Uh, I think uh, we were not able to go through the entire scenario because of the time lag, uh, because because I wanted to have some discussion about PSA screening initially. Uh, so that's why there was uh, no time to complete the scenario. But I think you did well. Uh, in terms of uh, MRI, uh, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. So it shows me like a two uh, features in this. Uh, um, so yeah, so the, 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 the scenario was towards active surveillance in this case. So if we did a biopsy, it was three plus three. So what are we going to do in terms of active surveillance? What is the recent nice guidelines regarding that? And how are you going to follow up? And when will you do ma any management depending on changes? Uh, and that was the actual scenario. Uh, you have got any questions on how do you, how do you think you did it? Well, I think it was fine. Uh, I'm not um, just happy I couldn't come out with Lycat because I, I should be able to do that. Uh, we yeah. use more of Pirat, but um, I should be able to say something about Lycat. Yeah, Lycat is like more uh, more objective where you take uh, uh, clinical history, uh, PSA density, family history, everything into consideration along with Pirates. So that's what the nice uh, recent the recent nice guidelines uh, recommend only Lycat scoring. Uh, so that's why I was asking you that question, but uh, that was good, actually. Yeah. You got any other questions? No, no I'm all right. Okay, good. Uh, uh, Anand, you want to comment something? Yeah. Uh, good presentation, uh, good progression, nice communication skills. I'm quite happy with that. Um, just um, one main uh, kind of a feedback is uh, just know a little bit more in detail about the screening studies. Previously, in 2010, 2015, those ranges, we used to do, do a complete scenario on prostate cancer screening. Now, we are not mm. doing that. We are more doing like active surveillance, surgical radiotherapy, etc. Because screening is almost not practiced in at least UK and not must encouraged. And uh, But it still it holds its platform in European countries and uh, definitely in America. So I will expect you to know about PLCO and ERSPC studies like for the MTOP study. I will encourage you guys to know a little bit about some numericals and what are the disadvantages of PLCO study, especially the contamination of the treatment harm with uh, control harm with people getting treated on the sidelines and um, ERSPC study, it's uh, like a multi-institutional study, why some countries were able to do quite robust screening, but some subset countries were not that strong in the evidence so it's nice to have some values to that and yeah. i'm glad you brought in erspc risk calculator any scenario if there is a risk calculator it's very good tool to use and um, you have indirectly brought in this but you haven't labeled it which is prostate cancer risk management program uh, that's a very UK based program. So read about this. That will really yeah, That's help. what I was asking about. Yeah, the yeah. three numbers yeah. from prostate cancer risk management program. And uh, that number is taken from the PROTECT trial. Yes. Yeah. So it's nice to spell that uh, prostate cancer risk management program. And uh, even compared to PLCO or ERS ERSPC study, this is very important because it's UK based. And um, nice that you brought in promise study as you know this promise study we are going to use at least once 80 percent of the time in for everyone i mean 
so it's nice to know instead of saying high negative predictive value put some value to that put some number to that even if an approximate number that will make sense and that will really boost the mark from your threading at 7 7.5 you can easily touch 8 and um, again uh, know everything about the pyrat score in detail uh, i will say pyrat 1 and 2 the chances of cancer is quite less and directly go towards 3 4 5 and explain the percentages and uh, yeah nice that you bring in the nice guidelines here and there that's very handy very good so thank you, you very much good you can mute yourself uh, we will start the scenario for the second trainee murli you're happy to time please yes yes ma'am good um now the scenario for the second trainee it's the same patient let us travel with the same patient the patient was kept on say for example active surveillance and uh, what is the protocol for follow-up in an active surveillance please so I will follow the NICE 2019 uh, guidelines for the uh, follow-up of active surveillance. So in the year one, it includes uh, PSA every three to four months, DRE at 12 months, and MRI scan at 12 to 18 months. Uh, this will be uh, followed by from year two onwards. Uh, this can be changed to PSA at six months, uh, DRE annually, and uh, M uh, MRI if there is any change of PSA kinetics. All through the active surveillance, PSA kinetics has to be monitored. And after two years, if there are locally agreed protocols, the patient can be uh, referred back to the community to continue with the PSA surveillance. Okay. And um, you are seeing this patient uh, in the first two follow-ups, not much change. And um, in a year's time, you are repeating the MRI because the PSA climbed to seven and the MRI showed at least a few areas of uh, PIRAT3 and one suspicious area in the right posterior zone, possibly PIRAT4. What will you advise him? So uh, I'll tell him that uh, the MRI is showing this is progression. So we have to repeat the biopsy to see if there is any great progression in the biopsy. Uh, in my practice, I will offer him uh, transperineal local anesthetic uh, biopsy and that will be uh, targeted plus systematic biopsy uh, so i will counsel him uh, uh, regarding the risk and benefit of the procedure i'll tell him the aim is to find any uh, progression of disease i will support my um, counseling uh, on the with the bows information leaflet and then uh, uh, after the counseling if he is all right to go ahead i list him for the biopsy Okay, why you need to do the systematic biopsies? You know that there is a PIRAT4 area and if you hit that yeah. correctly, you will get positive diagnosis. What is the role for systematic biopsies? So, uh, the, uh, there is a, a negative, the negative predictive value of the MRI scan is 90% uh, 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 according to the PROMISE trial and uh, uh, the in the secondary endpoints, a Gleason 3 plus 4 score missing is around 20%. So uh, we have to take that into account. Uh, so to uh, there could be uh, uh, clinically significant cancers in other areas. So that's the reason why currently the recommendation is to go ahead with targeted and systematic biopsy. Okay, so you did uh, four left side four right side systematic biopsies with three targeted biopsies of the whole four plus four eight and three eleven biopsies three biopsies came positive and all three showed Gleason score four plus four equal to eight so how are you going to manage him so i'll discuss the uh, uh, um, but, I mean, histopathology uh, and MRI scan in the MDT. Uh, my aim is to confirm the uh, pathology and to risk categorize him according to the uh, nice, uh, nice uh, guidelines. So with a uh, with this PSA of seven and Gleason score of eight, uh, he will be in uh, uh, grade group four, and the risk category will be uh, uh, four plus four. It is a high, high risk category. So uh, my further uh, treat treatment options will be based on uh, the high risk category of uh, prostate cancer. 
Okay, so what are all the options you're going to give him? So I'll tell him that uh, uh, the options available, uh, active surveillance is not an option anymore. We have to go ahead with the treatment option. Uh, for a high risk uh, uh, category, surgery in itself is not the ideal uh, rec recommendation, but it can be used as part of uh, multimodal treatment. Uh, second option is uh, going ahead with the radiotherapy. And uh, third, uh, sorry, uh, th these are the options. And I'll uh, give him the in, uh, all the information, and then we'll send him to a surgeon who is doing the uh, prostatectomy, and also to the oncologist to discuss on the options of radiotherapy. And uh, after he makes his uh, decision, after the uh, in a shared decision making uh, uh, pattern, uh, I will uh, go ahead with the choice that he has taken. Have you completed your staging? So, I'm oh, sorry, uh, for, um, for him, high, for high risk uh, category, we had to do a bone scan and make sure that there is no uh, other areas of metastasis. And if, uh, yeah, so uh, I'll do a bone scan in this one. Sorry. Okay. Is there any role for CT scan for lymph node staging? Um, if uh, the, uh, if the patient is for a radiotherapy, then the, uh, the uh, oncologist will be, uh, um, I mean, uh, oncologist has to know if there are any uh, um, uh, pelvic nodes or extra pelvic nodes because the radiotherapy treatment can change uh, de uh, and the radiation dose can change depending on the uh, uh, presence of nodes. So definitely I'll go for a CT, thorax, abdomen, and pelvis uh, to, uh, to see for any uh, visceral meds and also to see for any uh, lymph node enlargement. Okay, when you explain these findings to the patient, uh, patient is leaning more towards the radical prostatectomy because one of his friend had radical radiotherapy and developed uh, colitis and uh, rectal fistula and he's not very happy with that path. What is your advice? Mm -hmm. So I'll tell him that for a high risk uh, category of prostate cancer, uh, the uh, uh, I mean, uh, robotic radical prostatectomy is an option. However, uh, we had to make uh, we, the patient has to be aware that there is high risk of positive margins. There is high risk of uh, future biochemical failure, and uh, so th this will be my two concerns regarding that. So I'll tell him that if uh, if it shows positive margin or if it shows uh, any local recurrence afterwards, he will need adjuvant treatment, and that could be in the form of uh, salvage radiotherapy. Okay, patient understood this and he wants to go for radical prostatectomy. How are you going to counsel him? So I'll tell him that the aim of the procedure is to uh, remove the uh, cancer-bearing prostate with a clear margin, uh, at the same time preserving his uh, continence function and sexual function and uh, to avoid any high-grade complications during the post-operative period. Practically, this involves a procedure under general anesthetic. Uh, I'll tell him the uh, risk and benefit of the procedure. The benefit of the, benefit of the procedure is that uh, uh, the cancer-bearing prostate can be removed completely, and uh, the risks involved are either early, early operative, late operative, or anesthetic risks involved. The early or intraoperative risks involved are bowel, uh, risk of injury to the bowel, uh, risk of injury to the bladder, rectal in, uh, risk of rectal injury, uh, and uh, in uh, post-operatively, the immediate post-operative period, the risks involved are leakage of urine, displacement of catheter, um, risk of DVT, risk of PE, and late complications like uh, risk of uh, anastomotic uh, uh, I mean, um, bl uh, bladder and stenosis and risk of positive margin, risk of local recurrence uh, and uh, problems with incontinence, problems with uh, sexual function. Uh, and uh, I'll also counsel him regarding the uh, anesthetic risks involved. I will give him the BOSS inf information leaflet on the procedure and uh, then uh, take his uh, opinion into consideration about whether he still wants to proceed with the robotic radical prostatectomy. Okay, what is your take on concomitant lymph node dissection? 
so um, for uh, there are uh, we can use either uh, no nomograms to decide on the uh, concomitant uh, lymph node dissection. Uh, if the you know, in, uh, in the, uh, the nice nice uh -huh. approach. Yeah. Okay, good. We will stop that. How do you think you did? Uh, was not good because I should have come straight away with the investigations. I concentrate only on the treatment part, so yeah, that was not good. Starting was starting was fine, the initial part, but the treatment part I struggled. Yeah, I think uh, you just uh, missed that section of uh, completing the staging. Um, sometimes staging, yeah. the examiner may not prompt, and uh, examiner will just finish the scenario. You may come out of the table quite uh, blissfully that the things have gone well, but sometimes it may not reflect on the marks. It is still a good performance. I will still place the mark EC 6.5 on a good day 7. Uh, but the, the problem is uh, it's very important that uh, how we have done so that we will make sure that we are maintaining the standards. Uh, you are in a good platform. Uh, just need to be a little bit more methodical in the presentation. Um, the main thing why we do the systematic biopsies along with target biopsies, you can bring down the words like prostate cancer is a multifocal disease. And uh, that is the reason we need to quantify and make sure that we are managing it clearly. And um, you mentioned about the grade group four, uh, that is a Gleason's grade group four, more of pathological, histological based grade group four. And then of course the high risk you correctly mentioned. Um, I will prefer staging uh, even for radical radiotherapy because that will really help us to statify. So the ideal CT scan is only CT scan abdomen and pelvis. We don't have to do thorax because it's very rare for thorax to be involved as a skip lesion when abdomen and pelvis were normal. So bone scan okay. and CT scan abdomen and pelvis are the standard. Of course, if the patient is very high risk, PSA in um, uh, nearing 20s or something like that, the thorax has a role. And adding thorax to CT, abdomen, pelvis is not going to add any radiations. You have missed the word Macmillan nurses. It's very important. So you may have brought it at least two, three times or at least once. And uh, when you're discussing the surgery, you need to bring the words like nerve sparing. So when you are planning nerve sparing with surgery, uh, you can say that when I'm discussing an MDT, I will try to correlate the positive, but I said three cores positive. So there is a good possibility all three cores could be just the targets on the, say, left side. And uh, so you can still try to preserve the nerve on the right side. On the left side, you can go much more lateral dissection, sparing, I mean, uh, sacrificing the nerves for the cancer clearance. So you are aim definite continence, nerve sparing based upon the pathological spread of the disease. And uh, I agree with your views on the lymph node dissection, but in high score, it's always nice to have a lymph node dissection. Um, it has prognostic values. And uh, there was a concept previously that uh, robotic surgery is very inferior and compared to the open surgeries for the lymph node dissection, that is now a little bit clear. The robotic surgeons are getting better and uh, the outcomes have been good. Uh, on the positive side, um, nice that you mentioned the NICE guidelines 2019 when others are just saying NICE guidelines, you are able to bring the year. Now, since you brought the year, I will encourage you to bring the month from next time. So you can try to say NICE guidelines published 9th of May 2019. Even if you miss the date 9th, if you bring the month May, that will further improve. This is the way to improve. And um, glad that you brought in promise, negative, predictive value values and also the nice risk category of low risk, intermediate risk and high risk. Sometimes examiners will ask you, the easiest way to answer is what is low risk, what is high risk, you can explain and the rest of them will be the intermediate risk. Good performance, um, except for missing the staging, um, I will say mark seven, but if you are able to bring the logic of nerve sparing, which side you will nerve spare, you will decide based upon which side the histology being positive and also with MRI input, those will make you towards eight. Okay? Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Murli, you want to add anything? Yeah, the only comment is uh, when you say radical radiotherapy, it's always better to add uh, adjuvant hormonal treatment because uh, 
high risk patients we always give adjuvant hormone treatment so when you mention the options itself you can say radical prostatectomy and radical radiotherapy with hormonal treatment uh, that will okay. let the examiner know that you know about uh, the the bola trial and everything which says that uh, uh, hormone treatment is given along with radiotherapy that is the only additional point otherwise everything was fine which was good actually yeah, yeah. Good. Again, again, when you are saying hormone treatment, mention neoadjuvant hormone treatment because you are starting it before the yes, radiotherapy, and it is divided into something like one year, if not like two to three years, one year for intermediate risk and two to three years for high risk cancers. Don't depend on the CT template for radiotherapy planning for staging. That's not a very good habit. Some hospitals do. Please do separate staging, separate bone scan CT so that you are quite clear in the patient staging before you send the patient for uh, a surgeon specialist or a radiotherapy specialist. Okay? Sure. Good. Murli, the floor is yours for the third scenario. Okay. Um, the time starts now. Yeah. Is the candidate ready? Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. So we'll start the case. Uh, so you have been uh, referred a patient by a GP uh, who is a 70 year old gentleman fit and well and uh, he went to his GP with some uh, back pain and uh, his uh, GP did a, a PSA which came back as uh, 320. So he has been referred to your clinic uh, via two week with pathway. He's quite fit for his age. Uh, he has got performance status of zero uh, and uh, he has got uh, uh, diabetes and hypertension but well controlled. Uh, so you have seen him in the clinic, you've examined him, the bladder is not palpable, uh, he has got some uh, back pain, but uh, uh, he doesn't have neurovascular deficits, and uh, DRE showed a malignant feeling prostate. So what, do, what, are your what are your plans now, and what are you going to explain the patient? So again, um, uh, my, my, my management will be history examination, investigation, and further management, and history you have explained here, so we're giving his... Uh, PSA reading 320, which is quite high, but still I will uh, prefer to get another reading. And uh, on the neural examination, he told that there's uh, no neurology and no deficit. So I will uh, uh, organize his uh, uh, investigation, which will include uh, MRI scan and uh, CT chest abdominal pelvis, baseline uh, bloods, including uh, <coughs> calcium, uh, BCUNE, and uh, then I will. Uh, do the uh, wait for the, uh, the results of the investigation and uh, my worry is not that you're not going to have a metastatic uh, cord compression because there's no neurology symptom and i will take the met from there so if you're not concerned about cord compression why do you want to get an mri spine uh, mri spine because uh, uh, this uh, ct scan is also good and then yes mri spine of uh, pelvis is included but mri spine should include in this yes you're right okay so you've done an mri spine it shows multiple metastases in the spine but there is no cord compression do you want to do any other investigation for the bones uh, the bone scan yeah so can you comment on this so this is the bone scan, uh, uh, it is anterior and posterior view, and which shows uh, multiple uh, uh, high in intensity uptake in the pelvis, femurs, in the, all the spine, and then uh, both femurs and uh, in the pelvis. Uh, I, I can see uh, some contrast, cannot see uh, contrast in the kidney, but there is some contrast in the bladder as well. So technically it's not a super scan. Okay, so how do you define a super scan? The super scan is uh, due to in, uh, very extensive bony mats and all the uh, traces are is, uh, taken by the mats and it, it does not excrete into the kidneys. Yeah, and technically in this image, I cannot see any kidney excretion at all. That bladder you're saying maybe some bony, pelvic bony lesion. Sorry, Sorry. yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Last so, what... missed... Sorry? So, I mean, technically, this is also a super scan because there is uh, no kidney excretion in this. Yeah, but uh, if you see the, um, but my, my ex, ex, uh, ex, uh, the explanation that the, if you see the scan uh, tracer into the bladder, it always comes to the excretion. Where yeah. Yeah. yeah, so this is probably not bladder, but that's fine. Uh, yeah. So what are you going to do now? What are you going to explain him now? 
So I will explain that he has extensive metastatic disease and I will see this uh, gentleman after discussion in the MDT meeting along with the urology nurse and a combined clinic with the oncologist as well. And then he needs a closed uh, surveillance uh, regarding his uh, neurology and also I will offer him uh, uh, anti-androgen therapy. So what anti-androgen therapy do you advise? So I will offer him the surgical or the, uh, the, the medical uh, pharmacological and uh, uh, the, the surgical will be the extracapsular bilateral orchidectomy and the pharmacological will be the anti-androgen uh, LH, LH uh, antagonist, LH, uh, LHRH agonist and then the androgens, anti-androgens suppressors and uh, then uh, can, uh, 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 what you call the chemotherapy as well. Okay, so you mentioned this to him. So he's not happy about surgery. He wants medical treatment. So in your in your practice, uh, what is the main hormonal treatment you use? So in my uh, practice, because he's extensive bone metastasis and the risk of uh, uh, cord compression, I will uh, give him the offers of either having a, a anti LHRH or uh, LHRH agonist combined with the uh, uh, anti-androgen therapy. Okay, you are saying something about chemotherapy. Uh, yeah. What is that? He wants to know what is that and uh, how is it done and everything. Uh, the, that. the evidence of this uh, upfront docetaxel is came from the Stampede trial, which increased the survival surveillance of the cancer patient as compared to the alone uh, ADT treatment. Okay, so what do you do for that? You uh, for so, chemotherapy. So for that, uh, I will again uh, have a combined clinic with the oncologist and have the patient, as you told, that he's fit and healthy, and his uh, uh, UNEs are fine, his uh, renal functions are okay. Then we will offer him upfront of docetaxel, docetaxel uh, followed by the uh, uh, LHRH agonist therapy. Do you want to do something before chemotherapy? Uh, do the do the uh, oncologists give chemotherapy without uh, histological evidence? Oh, sorry, <laughs> I missed that. Uh, yes, uh, but uh, yes, if we can give, but if they, you have definite evidence, then you, you cannot give the docetaxel without the um, without the histology. But if you you can uh, if you extensive bony metastasis, you can give uh, ADT therapy. But yes, technically he needs that. Uh, yeah, so you yeah, discussed this, and uh, he had a thrust biopsy, which yeah. showed he's in 4 plus 5 prostate cancer in 3 out of 4 cores. Yeah. Okay, uh, so he referred him to the oncology, so uh, he had uh, docetaxel given. So how many cycles of docetaxel do they give? Uh, and they are given uh, about uh, five, 5 cycles. Okay, 6 cycles, okay. Uh, so you told me something about Stampy trial. So what is the other trial uh, which uh, supported this... Uh, Upfront chemotherapy? I'm sorry, I cannot recall at the moment. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. And uh, do you want to give something else along with the uh, chemotherapy? Yeah, prednisolone is given along with that. Chemotherapy. Yeah, yeah, that is fine. And in terms of uh, extensive bony metastasis, you have starting on hormones. Do you want to do uh, give him something else for his bones? Yeah, for, for the bone, uh, I will give him the zoledronic acid. Yeah, solidronic acid is commonly given. Okay, then uh, you, you have given him this and uh, you see him in the clinic in six months' time. His uh, back pain is slightly better but still has uh, uh, pain in his back. His PSA reached an adder of about uh, uh, 14 uh, in six months' time. And uh, what are you going to counsel him this time? So at this time, uh, because it's, it's the PSA is going to drop, but he's still having the, the back pain. So I will re-evaluate him with the uh, MRI spine to see is there any new uh, compression of the of the no, but it doesn't have any other symptoms it's just pain it's not there's no neurological deficit do you want so to do it if, if, if the gain the mri spine is okay then i will ask uh, i will offer him a local radiotherapy to the spine to uh, for the pain control yeah so palliative radiotherapy can be given uh, so yeah he we continue to have pain in the lower back so he had palliative radiotherapy which uh, improved the symptoms uh, then he was again seen after 12 months. Uh, he is still on uh, androgen depression therapy and his PSA rose to 52 now from 14. So it means that it is uh, it's going to the uh, cast resistance uh, uh, CA prostate. So again, I will reevaluate him uh, along with the, a new MRI scan 
and the CP chest abdominal and the pelvis uh, that uh, will uh, uh, offer uh, uh, offer him uh, again uh, uh, the new forms of uh, uh, chemotherapy like angelutamide. Do any other blood test before that? To confirm uh, that? I will uh, I will do the serum PSA and then then the serum calcium as well. So PSA is already done. That's what I told you. It's fifty two. Uh, serum testosterone, sorry, serum testosterone. Okay, okay. Uh, so you have done testosterone. It is in castrate level. Is uh, oh, so sorry. It is it is castrate level or not? It is it is castrate level. Okay. Okay. And yes. uh, uh, CT scan does not show any new metastasis, and the bone scan also doesn't show any new metastasis. So what is your plan of action now? So, so plan of action again, I will uh, discuss in the MDT meeting and along with the uh, oncologist uh, and then I will, uh, because it is a, a asymptomatic, so I will up continue the observation. Okay. Uh, do you want to give uh, any other treatment? So uh, the other team, team to because combine the, the dry thing. So it's just only ADT, then I will combine the anti androgen adder to go to the maximum androgen block. Correct. Okay, yes, guys, yes. we need to stop there. Okay. Uh, so how do you think you did it? Uh, I was a little bit uh, missed, but detracked, but uh, yeah, regarding the, because I think in the docetaxel, I should have the targeted biopsy of this. Uh, and yeah, then, uh, just yeah. One, yeah. But I think rest of the thing, I mean, you, uh, all your flow was good. Uh, your presentation was good. Uh, the only thing is uh, with a PSA of 320 with a malignant feeling DRE, I don't know if you will do a repeat biops, repeat PSA because it's clear cut that he has got symptoms. He has got a PSA of 320. It's called a malignant DRE. Okay. And uh, uh, we usually don't do a repeat uh, uh, PSA. Okay. Just to check. That's only done when the PSA is quite low. When you don't know that it's prostate cancer. That is one okay. point. Yeah. And um, yeah, so MRI spine, uh, so you uh, do MRI spine to uh, not to exactly look for metastasis, but to exactly to see for cord compression, basically, yeah. when a patient comes with uh, uh, back pain. Uh, so we, you should have told the bone scan initially itself, if you could get a bone scan, because a CT scan, you told CT scan, but uh, then I asked you, then you told me bone scan. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that is one thing. And uh, hormones, yeah, you're right. So in this patient, I would start him directly on LHRH antagonist rather than agonist because he has got high chance of uh, uh, disease progression, tumor yeah. flare-up. Uh, so uh, and um, uh, super scan, you are fine with that. And then the biopsies, yeah, especially because we always forget this point because uh, yeah, it should uh, be in the initial year. Yeah, Those attacks, like it should be first in them. That might hold a bit guy. Yeah. yeah, if he's a fit guy, then he will definitely be for uh, upfront chemotherapy. Of so we we'll also discuss the option of uh, uh, biopsy with him and then uh, go ahead with that. Uh, the trials are chartered trial in Stampy trial. Uh, chartered, chart yeah. Yeah, chartered trial. So that was the one which initially was done, uh, which showed that there is, uh, I mean, the chartered trial is that uh, two diseases, like the high volume disease and low volume disease. Okay. And in high volume disease, uh, meant by if there are more than four bony metastasis or visceral metastasis, yeah. uh, then the overall survival was much better in that group than the uh, low uh, low volume metastasis disease. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so this is what you just need to know. So, like uh, 17 months if it is a high volume disease, and 13 months if it is a low volume disease, increase in overall survival. And Stampy trial was uh, absolutely right. And now recent trials have shown that you can uh, even give uh, abiraterone and enzalutamide uh, as upfront uh, treatment along with ADT. Um, and uh, you need to know six cycles of docetaxel, and sometimes they may ask you side effects uh, like neutropenia, you can have fluid retention and things like that. And yeah. solitonic acid, always and especially in the high volume, I mean, uh, bony disease, to avoid the risk of skeletal related events, uh, yeah. uh, zolitronic acid is always given along with that. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, as you know, so, uh, so uh, then you went well, so we went to the castrates and prostate cancer. Uh, so you repeat your scans just to make sure that there are no new metastasis and you may, you, you check that it's castrate level. Uh, so then you uh, start him on MAB and then you see if the PSA gets controlled and then PSA rises again, then stop the anti antigen see how it is, and then go for second line treatments like abiraterone, insulatomide and everything. Yeah, that's perfect. Anand, do you have any comments? Yeah, good. Uh, it's a tricky situation and tricky scenario because it's not really like a surgical scenario. It's more of a medical practice, but this is a scenario, so we should know. Apart from what uh, Murli has added, again, you have missed the Macmillan nurses. You should have involved quite early. It's very important. They may be the main people who are coordinating the patient's continuity of treatment with the oncologist also. 
when you are seeing radiotherapy for the pain again label it as palliative radiotherapy and uh, in the completion maybe when you are saying the feedback for yourself you said target biopsies there is no the words have to be used very carefully targeted biopsy is the terminology used when we use something like for example mri or cognition based target or the ultrasound based targets where you have the difficulty in identifying the disease here it's just a finger gated biopsy you don't even need an ultrasound probe so don't use the word target biopsies oh. for this scenario yeah. okay and uh, you mention you didn't mention quite detailed about calcium and vitamin d it's very important you should me measure that and if it's on the lower level they should get appropriate uh, calcium and vitamin d supplements you should advise the patient about moderate activity making sure they are not yeah. falling and getting themselves fractured that will really destroy the quality of life and um, the life will be entirely different if the patient had a fractured femur so you should spell out the bone health it's very important no few drugs like abiraterone enzalutamide and docetaxel doses and how much cycles etc with some side effects yeah. suspend trial or, or sorry stampy trial no much more in detail how many arms are there there are new arms added up to if i am correct 2018 and i don't think we are adding any new arms now at least so abiraterone enzalutamide they are all new new arms so it's very important a very very one of the world's best study multi arm study suspend trial is referred by even non urology oncology exams uh, as a uh, uh, sorry stapi <laughs> Uh, i'm always thinking suspend being an intro urologist so stampy trial uh, is quoted as one of the such a very gold standard study even for the non urologist um, to quote for a good study so you should be able to say about stampy trial there is a good possibility one or two stampy trial clinical investigators maybe your examiner and uh, just on the sidelines i wish to say one thing i agree with you that i will not say this uh, bone scan as a super scan uh, because it's a touch of uh, renal shadow is seen very 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 minimal and the bladder is getting filled but very important if in exam the examiner is leaning towards the super scan please don't fight examiner yeah, yeah. is uh, got the last verdict and uh, your aim is to pass the exam not to fight with the exam and win the win the examiner that is the least of your concern so if you think the examiner is strongly going towards super scan just stay quiet and try to progress that's very important uh, but sometimes the examiners will also agree with you that it's not a super scan but they will test you by asking some prompting questions so just be careful but don't confront and uh, don't make it that this is my view and uh, uh, even if your view is correct that will be taken very wrong okay yeah very good that's very important take home message i thought we will do one session just for this training and uh, i will try to behave uh, uh, like a different set of examiner uh, and see how you guys are able to face the different sets of examiners so at one day we will do um something like a very extraordinary case scenarios and also extraordinary exam situations i will do three or four scenarios that will be very useful because um there is always a possibility that in one table one scenario you will face some challenge okay yeah. good fantastic if there is no other questions or clarifications can we complete this yeah i think i should add on uh, i should have mentioned the dexa scan as well as yes. a part of workup yes yes absolutely yeah. well done good recall good recome back thank you very much thank you thank for thank you all. very much thank, thank you. you very much mr very good. thank you thank you mr thank you mr thank you mr thank you everyone have a good day